If you enjoy these programs, please like and subscribe. Go ahead and hang up now and tune in for your answer. Thank you very much, Marlon. Numbers 21. The nation in the wilderness is attacked by poisonous snakes. And the nation is under the impression that they have a snake problem, a serpent problem. What Moses is commanded to do is to take a, a bronze serpent and place it on a pole and hold it up to the sky. Okay? So that people will look up at the bronze serpent. There's a play on words between the word serpent and the word bronze. So imagine the picture. The Jews are going, what's going on here? They're screaming at Moses. Why, you took us out of Egypt that we would have this problem? Got it? So the people were under the impression, as people often are, that I've whatever problem they are confronting, I've got a... I got a marital problem. No, you don't. You have another problem, but not that. I have a serpent problem. No, you don't. So imagine you think you have a serpent problem, a poisonous snake problem. So he, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher of blessed memory, puts a bronze serpent on a pole and holds it up high. When people look at it, now what are they looking at? They see a serpent made out of bronze. But what's the background? The heavens, right? So they go, oh, we really have a heavenly problem, not a serpent problem, and then they are healed. The book of John is going to completely misappropriate this and is going to use this in John chapter 3, that this somehow is Jesus and the Messiah. Then you asked about Zechariah 13, verse 6. There we encounter false prophets at the end of days who will step forward and admit that they're really no prophet. I really should have been a tiller of the soil. This is insane. Background. Daniel describes the resurrection briefly in the 12th chapter, and he describes a resurrection there are many who lie on the earth who will rise, some for everlasting life, and others for lasting contempt and damnation. So that the, the righteous will have a resurrection, but the wicked also will be resurrected. For why contempt and damnation? What that means is that people will see, look how wicked these people are. Now we may look back at the leaders of different religions and say, oh, great people. But then they're going to see for themselves. One of these false prophets come into view in Zechariah 13, and he's going to be very ashamed of the visions that he had given, and he's going to admit that I really should have never claimed to be a prophet. I should have been working the soil. I should have been someone who works with breeding animals. And in verse 6, one shall say unto him, what are these wounds between your hands? So what is striking about him is that he has wounds between his hands, and they shall say, and he shall say unto them, those are the wounds I received in the house of my friends. What's crazy about this verse, you won't even believe me if I tell you this. Missionaries actually use it to say, ah, we have Jesus' crucifixion in the book of Zechariah. Mind-blowing. Because if this verse passage is talking about Jesus, it means Jesus is a false prophet. I don't know if you understood the enormity of that. We have Zechariah 13, which begins with God cleansing the earth of, of impurity. Read Zechariah 13, verse 1. This is when the fountain will be opened for the house of David. It's all messianic. And all the false prophets will be cleansed, will be removed, and even the dead ones are going to be brought back. And someone's going to say to him, what are those wounds? So missionaries actually use Zechariah 13, 6 out of context to say, so my Jesus, if Zechariah 13, 6 is talking about Jesus, it means he's a false prophet who's brought back from the dead based on Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. If you enjoy these programs, please subscribe 
Like this video and share it with others. Shalom.